Hey everybody, Abdel Misa here. Thank you for watching. I know, I know, I haven't been posting for the last few months. It has been absolutely insane, so I apologize about that. I know you have been like markets up and down, um, and I have been dealing with the volatility it has been absolutely insane uh, this year. Uh, the good news is like if you have been watching my videos, I made a call earlier this year for the S&P to reach 3,700 at the end of this year. And at that time, people thought, Abdel, you're crazy. I mean, we were talking like professionals, colleagues, friends, everybody thought like it is not impossible. The S&P was around that time, um, at right, 2,800. So people did not see that it was possible for the S&P to reach 3,700. Yet we're getting close, uh, 3,585. Um, um, obviously, when you give a price target, you're not uh, talking about exactly 1%, okay? You're trying to make a range um, of your prediction. So if you're within 1% or 2%, I think uh, you achieved your goal. Now, uh, I'm not saying this because we're getting close. That means I'm claiming victory. Absolutely not. Because you know what? The market will humble you um, when uh, uh, you, you try to be like, yeah, I'm right. You know what? In the market, you're going to be right sometimes. You're going to be right, wrong sometimes. The idea is to be a little bit more right than wrong. And then especially when you're wrong, you don't want to be too wrong and lose a lot of money. With that being said, today I wanted to talk about a quantitative shock that happened this previous Monday. Okay, so let's get to it. Okay, so this past Monday, we got the news from Pfizer um, that basically its vaccine so far has worked really well and it had uh, basically like over 90% uh, effectiveness, okay? Now, so this is a major news, obviously, in our fight uh, with this Corona virus. And then, so if you look at the market, ah, okay, S&P was up 1.36%, so you would think, no problem, everything looks good. Now, if you look under the hood, we literally had a quantitative shock or a quantitative meltdown. What do I mean by that, okay? So there is a popular quantitative strategy in the stock market, which is momentum. So you're basically, the trend is your friend as you hear, and then, so you basically go long. That means you buy stocks that have been doing well, and then you go short the opposite for stocks that are laggards, okay? And so far this year, of course, this strategy has done well. Now on Monday, we have seen a huge rotation due to the Pfizer news. So let's talk a little bit more about this rotation, okay? Um, so stocks that have done well during the coronavirus crisis, so think Amazon, Netflix, Zoom, so the stay-at-home type of stocks, okay? Those stocks that people wore long and that performed a lot on Monday, and instead, investors rotated into stocks that lagged. What are we talking about? Cruise lines, airlines, hotels, restaurants. So basically, these laggard, they had a huge performance. They made a lot of money on Monday, while the other stocks actually went down. And that has created, we call this a spread, that is massive. So in fact, this momentum strategy was down 15%, one five in one day. That is crazy. And in fact, quantitatively, that was considered an eight standard deviation move. And here's my problem with the quantitative strategies in general. So you hear an eight standard deviation move, as I just mentioned, that's supposed to happen like that has supposed to be very very rare like maybe it happens every hundred years I didn't do the math but it's so rare okay yet okay these eight standard deviation move we see them all the time okay the financial crisis we have another quantitative meltdown all right okay let's we're gonna call it like that's a rare that's an eight standard deviation move and here we go again the reality is really different and I really want you to understand this is it's not that these events are rare it's that the quantitative models are wrong, okay? When these mathematicians and data scientists, when they model these things, they don't model these one-off type of events. It's very hard to model them. And therefore, you know, they get them wrong. And so that's the danger with quantitative models. They cannot adapt to new events that we haven't seen in history or like massive 
changes like what we had on, on Monday. And that is really the challenge, okay? Because if you base your investment decision just based on back testing and looking at the rear view mirror, mirror and then basically thinking that whatever history will repeat itself, that's the challenge. When history does not repeat itself, then these quantitative models fail. And that's why, personally, um, I still think that human intelligence is key. When you make investment decision, the human intelligence is really important because you can adapt which machines, as of at least for now, they don't have that ability. And so at my firm, for example, at Market Cipher Partners, that is exactly the investment philosophy that we have. It's basically mixing the two worlds, okay? Like starting with what we call smart data, it's really the human intelligence, and really using quantitative analysis as a tool to process those human intelligence to help you. That's like using a calculator. Why do we use a calculator? Okay, we know, let's say, if I give you two big numbers and I say multiply them, Okay, you can multiply them, okay, but it's going to take you time. Now, when you use Excel or you use a calculator, it's easy, okay? And that's, to me, that's the way, um, at least my investment philosophy and my, my own beliefs, is we use these quantitative models to process and optimize things that make sense versus letting the machine do its own thing. So with that, thank you so much for watching today. I, I hope you enjoyed the, the description about these quantitative shocks that not many people knew about. Um, so in, I'm going to put together a video to discuss this roller coaster that we have seen for the past three months and, uh, and basically update my views on the market. So stay tuned and, and stay well. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.